Essex, a helping hand with your land. Neil from Essex here out today on the Kubota KX033 Mini Excavator. Going to take some time today and talk through a little bit with you on some of the technique of digging a hole. Uh, if you've ever run a mini excavator before, this is going to make an assumption that you already know the basics of the controls. If you don't, you want to refer back to some of our prior videos. We have some other ones that explain exactly how to operate one of these machines. But today we're going to take the time to talk about proper positioning and where your power comes from when you're putting one of these machines to work. So first things first, we're going to start the excavator up. And I'm going to do most of my work here at idle just so that I'm not having to yell over top of the engine. So the first thing we're going to talk about here is the blade. Uh, the blade serves a lot of different purposes, right? Most guys would look at this and think, oh, it's there to push dirt, which it is. You could use it to backfill your holes and that kind of thing. But it actually serves a much more important purpose in manipulating the pivot point of the machine. So when you're going to go dig a hole, you, you generally want to be digging and working over top of the blade. The reason for that is, if I lift this guy up and reach out with the boom, you can see here as I get all the weight from this boom out beyond the machine, how easy it is for me to pick up the back of the excavator, right? But if I take the blade and I put it down on the ground, I can now move this thing around and keep the machine planted and not be bouncing around here in the back. That's simply because that blade is moving the pivot point here forward beyond the tracks, right? By going forward that extra 18 or 24 inches or so that the blade is forward, it makes a huge difference in the machine's stability. So anytime you're starting one of those digging projects, you generally always want to be over top of the blade and digging in front of it. And that, that just makes that big, big difference in your stability. You do want to watch if you're out here working and you get a bucket full of soils like I have here, I've got it nice and far away from myself. As I swing the machine to the side now, I'm taking that same weight and I'm going over the side of the machine. And now I have that same load out this direction over top of the side of the tracks. And you can run into that same stability concern, except over this side, it's even worse. When you look at an excavator spec sheet, when you really dig into some of the more detailed numbers, you'll find capacity measurements in all sorts of positions. And the one over the side here is one of the worst. Again, it's because of where that tip point is. The tracks being that close to the house of the machine here brings that tip point back. And so you have the least amount of digging stability out over the side. The technique that you want to use when you're digging a hole is to go and put the bucket teeth down into the ground and then curl that bucket shut in order to fill it with spoils or fill it with dirt. So this small pivot, that rotation of your bucket, is where the machine has its power. Okay, if you go down into your hole and you were to try to use one of the other bucket functions in order to pull back towards yourself, say I sink the teeth in there and then I use the right hand stick to pull back in and try to bring the dipper back into the machine, I, I can't move, right? I don't have very much force. And if you just think of the physics of what's happening there, that long arm doesn't have a whole lot of power. It has, you know, it's overcoming the huge length of that boom. But in that same position, I can just curl my bucket in and with no trouble at all, I can break out that hard clay soil and bring it right over here to the side. So you always want to be using that bucket curl circuit in order to break that soil out and then the other functions of the excavator in order to crane the spoils out to the side and place them into your pile. Now what I've done so far here is basically a, just a curved trench, right? A curved hole in the ground. Excavators are typically specced out in what's called a two foot flat bottom. So this is basically about a 10 foot machine and that 10 feet would require you to, to dig a 10 foot flat trench. You have to be repositioning every two feet. So you always wanna be watching when you're specking a machine out that if you're digging at those deep depths that you have more boom than what you need. Otherwise, you're just repositioning over and over and over again in order to be efficient. In order to dig a flat trench, you need to be using multiple functions at the same time. So when you go in to do your dig, you wanna go in, take your bucket, curl that bucket back in order to break up the soil. But about the time that the bucket's bottom starts to go flat, you wanna to start to also pull the dipper back into the machine so that the bottom side of that bucket starts to cut a flat trench. And it's that combination of functions of the bucket curl and the dipper coming back into the machine 
that help you to dig that flat bottom that you're looking for to drop your pipe into or your electrical line or your conduit or whatever you're laying out. You need both of those functions to work smoothly in conjunction with each other in order to get that smooth result that you're looking for. Now as I start to go deeper here and I get into hard soil, you can run into these situations where you're pushing the excavator down into the ground and you're just not getting any amount of power. You can't break into the soil, it's really hard, the teeth aren't biting, they're not doing their job, and when you get down here and push, you just start to lift the excavator up off the ground and you don't get any power, right? So another technique that you can use with your blade is what's called pinning. So if I take the machine here and I do a 180 with it, and I put the blade to my back instead of to my front, I could do a pin. So I could now take the loader, take the blade, push the blade down, and actually pick the back of the machine up. And now when I get down here with my excavator bucket and I start to lift, I get a lot more power and a lot more ability to break into that ground and grab those hard soils and pull. Now you gotta watch, this kind of thing can happen here, right? Where I don't, I've moved that pivot point that we were talking about earlier. That's back behind me now. And so my crane ability, the amount of power that I have to lift up and out of the hole starts to go down. But my ability to push down and break into that hard soil becomes better because I'm, late, I'm taking all that additional weight now that's on the back of the machine and bringing that forward here. And so when the boom wants to pick up, it not only has to pick the front of the machine, it's got to pick the back too. So an operator would refer to this as pinning. And when you get into these hard, difficult soils, it really makes a big difference in the ability of the machine to go down and really break through that hard stuff and get it up out of the ground. So that's a little bit on the function of an excavator and the technique that you want to use to get the most power out of it possible. Just in summary, those smaller pivot points, the bucket is going to be where your digging power comes from. If you want to break that stuff loose and you're in hard material, you always want to be using that bucket as your most powerful point in the machine. That bucket breakout force is really what does your work. In order to dig those flat trenches, you got to get those multiple functions going, get that bucket back, pull it back into you. And if things are really getting insane, doing that pinning technique really helps to break stuff loose and get you back to working. So I'm gonna get inside before the rain cuts loose here. If you have any need for equipment, parts you need to buy, or service needs to be done, give us a call at Messix. We're available at 800-222-3373 or online at Messix.com. <laughs>